Hey, welcome guys to the KFO show, Kayak Fishing Obsessed. My name's Darren Wendell. I'm your host. A lot of people think my name is Wendell. That's not my first name. It's Darren. Actually, I have three first names, Darren David Wendell. You know what they say, don't trust a guy with three first names. But hey, you can find me at, at Wendell Fishing at Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And guys, I'm excited tonight because um, I got a pretty sweet guest for us. Uh, some of you guys already know. Um, but before we get there, I want to give a huge shout out to my man, Jeff, one of our listeners, uh, our sponsor of the show, making this all possible for all of us to kind of listen in, uh, usrivermaps.com. Like I said, Jeff's one, Jeff's one of our listeners. And uh, if you kind of see over my shoulder here, he started this business just about a month ago. He's been working on it for about a year or two. Um, these are awesome maps you can get printed off. And I know it's kind of hard to see the one right over my shoulder. So I have another one right here. And this guy takes um, basically all the maps that are out there, overlays them for all the streams and the rivers. This is printed on canvas. And these things look pretty sweet. So I know all you guys who are like listening in from the podcast, like, Darren, what are you talking about? So I apologize for those few moments. But I do want to thank you, Jeff. And uh, I got good news, everybody. Um, he's running kind of a special for everyone listening on the show. You can get $35 off an order. Uh, if you look at that little code there, get $35 off. So, Jeff, you're the man. Um, so let's go ahead and hop in. I want to introduce our guest for tonight, Texas Fishing Force, my man, Mike. Hey, welcome to the show. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So um, tell me, tell me the journey. Uh, why, why you two? How long you've been? How long you've been doing this? Um, really curious. I spent quite a bit of time on your YouTube channel today. I mean, I'm going back. Like I'm going back years. <laughs> Look, yeah. Looking at some of the the early stuff, which kind of put you on the map. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But hey, tell me the journey. I'm curious. You know, so I I didn't start uh, YouTube. I, I never wanted to be a YouTuber uh, by any means. But I what I did is, you know, I've, I've always had a love for fishing. I've been fishing since I was a kid, and I used to post all these pictures. And I had friends and family that were like, "Man, it would be really cool to see what you do out there." And so I had some GoPros, and so I just kind of strapped those on, and I. You know, the only way that I could share those with my family was through YouTube because, you know, the files were just too big. So I started doing that. And uh, about a month later, I logged on to YouTube to post a second video. And then I had uh, I had some people commenting and asking questions. And, uh, you know, it was, it was confusing because I was like, who, who are all these people? <laughs> Uh, this is supposed to be a place I'm just housing videos. Or, yeah, I was just watching my videos. I was just sending links to family. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so it grew a little bit. And I, I think I had like 100 people after, I don't know, two months, something like that. And then, you know, and then I had an audience. And so I was like, OK, well, I'll, I'll answer some of these questions. It, you know, if you go back and look at my first few videos, I didn't even talk in them. It was just recorded fishing, you know. Uh, and but then I had an audience. And so I started to. I answer questions on that and then it kind of grew and grew and then um i hit a thousand people in like six months and then i was like okay so i need to take this more seriously and yeah. uh yeah but i never you know i never wanted to be a youtuber i just you know i love fishing and i recorded what i was doing and and so it kind of grew from there so a thousand people you like thousand views or do you have a, like a thousand subs in six months i had a thousand subs in six months wow yeah. you didn't say anything <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I, you know, well, I think like three months in, I started talking, you know, you know, and just going through comments and like, okay, this is what I'm doing here. This is why this is the baits I'm using for all the people that were asking questions. But uh, I had no, I, you know, like, and I kind of woke up one day and I, I went from like 500 to like 800 overnight. And I was like, whoa, okay, where, where are you all coming from? I don't understand. So, and I wasn't posting my videos anywhere. They just, People showing up. So, how long ago was this when you started this? I guess it's been about three, three and a half years now, something like that. Okay. Because yeah. if you go back, maybe four, maybe four. I mean, like, so I started my YouTube before that because I was posting other stuff and I deleted all that and changed the name to Texas Fishing Force about six to nine months later. But if you go back and look, I do have some videos that are like four plus years old, but I didn't really start YouTube till six or nine months later. What are all the ones you deleted? Oh, well, I used to do like a lot of rock climbing. And uh, so, yeah. And so I, it used to just be my name. And then I changed the name to Texas Fishing Force once I had an audience. All right. So, right on. Right on. Yeah. So you have some videos. They're three years old. So this must have been some of your earlier ones, right? Mm -hmm. So we're looking like past some of your initial 
just you fishing videos. You did some videos. What were they? They were, here they are. Five things not to do in a kayak while fishing. And I would say your your number one video, yeah. um, which is just crazy. I think there's a half a million views yeah. um, in those two videos alone. Walk me through because they're kayak fishing related and everyone's going to give you a giant boo uh, here in a little bit because we you, you shared with me that all you do kayak fishing every once in a while. It's not yeah. your primary. Well, um, not anymore. No. <laughs> so We'll get to that. We want to know why. Why we lost you to the dark side. So we'll talk about that. But first, let's go back to those first initial videos. And we're talking hundreds of thousands. Yeah. And, and that happened so fast. And that was honestly at like the maybe nine month mark, something like that. Maybe it was less than that. It was probably more like seven, eight months into me actually doing this. Well, I decided before that, I was like, okay, well, because I have this following, I'm going to start doing a video every single week. Okay. And I was like really sticking to that. Every week I needed to put out a video. And there was a point in time where there was like, we had like three weeks of just horrible rain. And I was like, I, I, you know, I can't go fish and I can't show any of that. So I, I, I was like, well, I'm just going to do a video with some tips. And that was the first one. I did like five fishing tips in a kayak era. And uh, I uploaded that and I really thought that it was just going to bomb, but it was, it was more so for the YouTube algorithm just to keep videos going. Yeah. And, uh, it didn't do well at first. It was, you know, I had a few hundred views and that, that was pretty much it. And then about a week later, uh, I went, I went to bed at, you know, and then I had like maybe 700 views and then I woke up the next day and I had 13,000. What in the world? Who's the one who's up that late watching kayak fishing videos? Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> Where'd well, they come know, from? Yeah. I had a lot from Australia and then, uh, so that happened. And then a few days later, there was a, uh, kayak magazine that also has like an online thing. Um, and they kayak angler mag uh i believe so maybe so. yeah uh but they shared it and, and then it went from you know fifteen thousand views to fifty thousand views the next week and then uh, i think i hit a hundred thousand in two months something like that and and then it's just i mean even still today you know that video is three years old and every single month i get eight thousand views on that video still to this day years yep. mm -hmm. years I mean, it's the beauty of youtube right yep and so this gift that keeps on giving yeah. however so what do you remember those tips that you gave <laughs> no i don't you know I, I came up with it like right on the top of my head because i was like i gotta get a video out and i gotta do it tonight and so i just kind of turned on the camera and i just started talking and then i went back and edited it uh but no i don't i mean i think one was about like transporting your kayak and i, I don't remember it now you had like <laughs> yeah, accessories where you had some light yeah. photo I'm, I, I remember seeing these things uh, <laughs> i the funny thing is you know when i when i reach out to people to interview them for the show uh, i see their content and i've seen it for years and sometimes don't even realize that was their content when i asked them to be on the show to kind of interview them but um and so it's crazy to come full circle to actually speak with you now so man thanks for thanks for hopping on now Absolutely. tell us a little bit uh about that about that kind of journey from you primary, you've told me you're primary. I, I didn't ask him any questions for a show. I don't, I don't believe in pre interviewing yeah, people yeah. for shows. Um, but you did mention just in a brief email interaction with me that um, you're more into, you have a boat now, mm -hmm. more into tournament fishing. Tell us where you're at and kind of walk us through the transition from your kayak. I saw a video where you said I sold my kayak. Um, just kind of walk us through that whole transition to kind of where you're at today and what you're doing and where you're doing it. Okay. Well, so to start out, like when I got into saltwater fishing, uh, I, I started offshore. So I bought an offshore boat and then I realized real quick that one, a lot of people don't have money to come and join you fishing with that because you know, an offshore trip, I mean, you're talking $2,000 in fuel. Uh, and so I had this boat and you know, I would, I would, you know, invite, you know, I needed six to eight people just to be able to pay for that, uh, that fuel. And like, it, it's cool every once in a while, but people are like, no, I don't want to pay $400 every week to do this. <laughs> and so that last year that I had my offshore boat, I think I took the boat out like maybe nine times in a year. And I was like, why do I have this? And so I sold it. Uh, well, I had a friend, uh, of mine who, who's like, dude, you need to get a kayak like, and before that I was doing like a lot of wade fishing and bank fishing. And so I got this kayak, um, and it was supposed to be temporary and, and, uh, and then I loved it. And I, I did that for years. 
Uh, and then I started getting into kayak tournaments and all of that. Well, as my YouTube channel has grown and also my, my friend circle of fishermen, uh, most of my fishermen are boat tournament fishermen. Mm -hmm. And so while I was at, at one point going back and forth, I was fishing boat tournaments and I was fishing kayak tournaments. It just made more sense for me to focus on one. Uh, and that I also got a really good deal on a, um, super shallow running flats cat boat that I have now. And I had both for a little while, but I, I eventually I sold the kayak and I was like, okay, I'm going to focus mainly on this, but you know, the capabilities of my boat. Now I still fish a lot of the same places that I was kayak fishing before. Hmm. Um, and so I still have a lot of people from the kayak world that watch my YouTube because I'm just going there in a boat, you know, in fact, half the time I'm fishing around kayakers, you know, and just doing it in a boat. So, hmm. so primarily it's your friends, right? You're like, yeah. I'm moving for back because my buddies all do this. If you didn't have any friends, would <laughs> yeah. you still, what would you, would you still be in a kayak? Well, you know, I, I, actually just this weekend, I had a, my tournament partner asked, he said, do you miss kayak fishing? And, and, you know, yeah, sometimes I do. Sometimes I really wish I could just pull out the kayak, slide it out of the truck, get on the water and then go, uh, rather than, you know, get in the boat and fueling it up and doing all of that. You know, it, kayaking is just a much more kind of in tune with nature kind of feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I, I do, I miss it sometimes, but, um, you know, the convenience of the boat and where I can go and where I can't, um, it's easier <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Once Makes I'm on sense. the water, yeah, it's easier. Makes sense. What kind of kayak did you have back? I had back a Hobie Outback. Yeah. All right. So how, what was the length on that? 10, 12? I don't remember. Don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Do you have one now? No, no. No, uh, none. Nope, I don't right now. Um, however, all of my old kayak friends still have a ton, and so they invite me, and I'll, I just jump in theirs. Yeah, <laughs> That's, that's how it goes. You yeah. start collecting them. Yeah, like and Pokemon cards. Well, that's the way I was. I had, you know, I had three at the time, and I was like, okay, all right, this is enough. It's it, it's it's getting packed in here. And then once I got the boat, I was like, there's kind of no point in me to, uh, having multiple storage for kayaks and boats, uh, especially when all my friends have kayaks, and then you know, I just ride with them. So yeah, my dad is actually, I think he's on right now. Popsy on. There he is. He said, "Have fun on the show today." But we just <laughs> recently had a conversation. He's like, "Hey, I want to buy your kayak." So I'm like, I'm like in the market right now for okay. Your but I also know in that conversation when he says, I want to buy one, I think he also means I want to store it at your house. And so I'm coming <laughs> up with all these creative ways. Like I'm like, I can buy a barn. I need this. Like, I don't know how many more hoists I can put in my garage. And so I am running out of room folks. But um, so, Hey, if you got a question, any, I, I, this, it wasn't just supposed to be a, everyone listen to Darren ask questions and everyone listen to Mike give answers. It's supposed to be interactive. So you have a question. Uh, I am watching over here in the comment section. So feel free to go ahead and jump on in if you got a question there. And look, my pops is here. Um, there we go. <laughs> I know, right? So got a question, let me know. Uh, but I wanna hop into, I got I got a ton of questions for you, uh, Mike. We have, um, uh, there's one video that he says, your YouTube channel sucks. That was the title of yours. I wanna talk about that. <laughs> yeah. um, I wanna talk about what you do full time. I think it's pretty rad So talk about there. Uh, I'm, there, there's so many things that you were talking about in your videos being that I'm primarily a fresh, freshwater fisherman that I had no, like, I don't even know what you're talking about. So I want you to talk about like trout slicks. Um, okay. you had a video about, you know, five reasons to stop using live bait, which, you know, live baits like the go-to a lot of times, especially for saltwater, but I want to hear your thoughts on it. Um, you had some interactions. <laughs> I saw one of your videos that don't be this guy video yeah. and it looks yeah. like someone was cutting you off. I want to hear more more about tournament redfish fish uh, red fishing. And okay. So what's uh, where do we start? So let's go ahead and start with um, hmm, your YouTube channel sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start there because as a fellow content creator, one people don't understand how much time it takes to put to put this stuff together, right? And then to put it out there for the world to kind of have people troll you is just like really this is like free. Just move along if you don't like it type of thing. But anyways. We all get it, especially with, with your videos going to hundreds of thousands. You start getting it like every day. Yeah. Um, but hey, so, so share, share with me what you think, Tom Hanks. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. No, that's funny too. The amount of 
uh, going through all of the comments that people think that I look like Tom Hanks is, and I don't see it, but <laughs> um, hey, let me know. Do you think he looks like Tom Hanks? Actually, I think it's that specific thumbnail. It on is. His it is YouTube channel. So go find that one. Then tell me if you think he looks like Tom that Hanks video. I probably have 50 comments about Tom Hanks just from that thumbnail. <laughs> and I, it's crazy. But um, <laughs> any other time in your life, anybody say, hey, you look like Tom or just no, in that video. No, yeah. just that video. Yeah, so that's weird. the only one. It's it's the thumbnail. And I don't know what I did there. Or, you know what was different. But um, yeah, I, I got a lot of comments about that. Um, when it comes to the, uh, you know, the putting yourself out there. That's what that video was about. Yeah, I'm sure you watched it. But um, anytime you put yourself out on social media, and like I said, I never I, I never wanted to do this. Like it just became what it is. And I I really enjoy it now. And I love fishing. I love recording and I helping people and all of that. But anytime you put yourself on, out on social media, you're going to get trolls and haters and, and all of that. And so that video was just me reading some of those comments. Um, and making fun out of, uh, you know, I mean, I could go, I, I could do one of those every week, to be honest. And, really? Yeah. I mean, uh, some of the, some of the comments, I mean, I'm constantly deleting comments just because people are, they're ridiculous, you know, uh, and they don't know what it takes and they don't know the amount of work that goes into this and they don't know, um, you know, how much you put yourself out there for, for everyone to just judge you for nothing, you know? And so at first it really bothered me. And now I just laugh about it. I'm like, okay, it's another one of them. You know, <laughs> I have one is my it was my favorite. Someone trolled me and I laughed about it to this day. I have a lisp sometimes when I speak, especially because more pronounced when I'm uh, in my videos. And I had this one guy. All, all his comment was white Mike Tyson. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> I, just, I, I just rolled. I loved it. I was like, all right, I got to You just got to roll with it. And I looked it up as some kid. He's like 16 years old trolling me. Um, but I, I used to do that every time I would get somebody that would say something, I would have to go and I would look at their profile and I'd start looking them up and doing all this. And I was like, man, I'm spending a lot of work <laughs> finding people for no reason at all. And I don't care. Like, I mean, right. I don't now. I used to. It really bothered me. Like, why do these people not like me? What I do? <laughs> you know, but yeah, I hear you. Hey, OnlyFans is like, hey, haters going to hate. Interaction is interaction. Yeah, it's true. You know, it's still, you know, they're still writing. The algorithm picks it up. They don't know if it's good, bad, or in between. So, yep. I hear you there. I have a personal rule don't feed the trolls. So, if you troll me, I'm not going to respond. I'm going to dislike it. And here's the reality as content creators, you guys don't know this out here. We have the ability to like hide you. Yep. And you think you're continuing to write these zingers of comments, but no one's seeing them except for you. So, it's kind of like the jokes on you type of thing. Um, for all those haters out there. But nonetheless, Jeff has a question for you. We're in Texas yet. I live in Katy, but I fish uh, Galveston, Freeport, Matagorda, uh, that Texas coast area, mid coast mostly. No. Ever go uh, inland? Do you do any? I saw you do some bass fishing, but. So I grew up bass fishing, and that's where I started. My grandfather owned a marina in Tennessee. And so what? I would go up there in the summers and I would fish every summer when I was a kid. And when I, you know, came back to Texas and I used to fish a lot of lakes and I used to fish Lake Conroe and all of that. Um, but when I went and kind of trans, you know, I, I decided to go and do some saltwater fishing with some friends. And then I just got hooked on those fish um, and learning those very specific fish. I still, I still, you know, I, I'll do some bass fishing here and there, but my main focus is saltwater. So saltwater. And is, is redfish your number one that you go to? Yeah, just because all the tournaments, uh, you know, I mean, they have trout tournaments too, but I don't enter those. I, I'm really focused on redfish, but redfish are like the saltwater bass anyway. They, they react a lot the same way. They're very, very similar in, you know, their habits. And um, once you learn that, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm so focused on redfish that, you know, I, I really care about what they're doing in trout. Uh, I find it easier to catch them. It's probably harder to catch bigger ones, but um, redfish are very, very particular. Okay, so since I, I, I'm a complete noob when it comes to redfish. Like I know they, are, I know what they look like. I've seen plenty of videos, of people catching them. Um, but walk me through like how, your your tournaments. One, because I don't fish tournaments. Uh, I mm -hmm. typically don't. I, I don't know the reason why. Um, I think there's a fear inside of me, like it's just going to ruin it for me. It right. does. <laughs> does it? Okay. Well, there, there you go. My fear is, is, is realized. Uh, and two, I don't have the time. And two, and three, it's just going to be like 
I, mean, I got a small family, so I got a seven and a five year old. So getting out on tournaments all day and doing that week over week, I, I'm not sure the family would be uh, give that a huge thumbs up. And also, I mean, looks expensive. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. so walk me through that that whole world as if i don't know anything about it because i don't okay um well you know so i started doing a lot of the redfish tournaments back when i was doing kayaking and there was a lot of kayak redfish tournaments and i really enjoyed those and i used to do some bass tournaments back in the day as well um tournament fishing is a different world though um especially when it comes to redfish because redfish you have to they have to be between 20 and 28 inches um uh, and on any given day, I can go out and I can catch redfish. But okay. finding those redfish that are the size that you need to win a tournament, that's a different ball game. I mean, I, I can catch 25-inch redfish every day of the year. But to find a 27 and 3 quarters that's 10 pounds, that's that's rare, you know. Okay. And, you know, we could go out and we could catch 60 redfish in a day, but throw back, you know, all but three because we're trying to find some that are that specific weight. And on any other day, that would be a really good day. But I mean, I've gone out um, on redfish tournament days and not be able to find any over 25 inches. Or I've had the opposite where all the redfish I catch are too big and I can't keep them. Uh, and if I'm if it wasn't a tournament atmosphere, that'd be a, I mean, it's an epic day. You know, you're catching great fish all day long. But to find that perfect size redfish every single, you know, on a tournament day when you absolutely have to. Um, yeah, you do that enough and the pre-fishing and all of that it can it can take the fun out of fishing for you real quick well i was, I was watching one of your videos and you were like hey i, I got a tournament tomorrow and, no you didn't have a tournament the next day and you're just getting ready to go fishing you, you yeah. seem like super relaxed and made reference to i'd be kind of like all spun up right now pre prepping for the tournament what's what's that look like for you so yeah we do a lot of pre-fishing before these tournaments and um you know, the idea is to go find them and find the big ones and find the ones that we're looking for. Um, but you don't want to overfish it because we don't want to spook them and they not be there tomorrow. Uh, and I generally don't pre-fish uh, the day before any tournament because I don't want to I don't want to get those fish moving. I, I want them to stay where they are. Um, so generally two to three days before I'll start pre-fishing. Um, and any anywhere I go, if I catch fish, I leave. I don't want to stick around because I don't want to spook those fish. I don't want them disappearing. And, you know, uh, but there's a lot of work and it's really hard, especially when you come up on schools and schools of redfish and you, you know, you catch one to walk away from that and just drive away. It's, <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> you For know? the sake of tournament. So that would drive me nuts right, right there, knowing that they're there, giving up on a perfectly good day, mm -hmm. to possibly fish on another day that you might not be able to fish because the weather's bad. Yep. I'd yeah. lose my, I, wouldn't, I'd be able, I wouldn't be able to sleep for days. Yeah. And you, I mean, I've, I've done, it. I've, I've rolled up on schools of redfish and we, you know, catch one just to kind of see what size all of the fish are in that area, catch one or two. And then, I mean, you see 60, 100, 200 redfish swimming around out there and then we leave and it's hard to do. It's hard to train yourself to be like, yeah, if we keep fishing this, these fish are not going to be here in two days. So that sounds um, awful. I want yeah, to not do it for that right there. So, <laughs> yeah. so far, you've talked me out of it. I'm still waiting for where the fun's at. Keep keep walking me through it. Here's a real quick question um, from Salt Coast Fishing. How often do you get to go out? Because I know you're a business owner, and we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Uh, I go – so tournament day, uh, tournament weeks, I'll go two to three days. Uh, on fun weeks, I'll go one to two. <laughs> okay. You know, when I'm just fun fishing and I don't have tournaments going on. So um, I like to get out at least once or twice a week. Okay. So. Are you like a, kind of addicted to the to the tournament thing now? You feel like you have to because all your buddies are doing it. Yeah. Also, I got a question: um, How many guys are typically in a t the tournaments that you that you roll in? So there'll be two. Well, you can do them solo, um, but generally it's two two teammates per team. Yeah. And then uh, I mean, some of the smaller tournaments you'll have twenty five boats in the tournament. Some of the bigger ones you'll have a hundred. So you know, up to two hundred people realistically. Okay. Okay. So you gotta you gotta win some of these things in order to make it worth it, right? So how do Yeah, you but even even that, like one of my best friends is uh he's a huge redfish tournament guy. He's been doing this for a long time. And I'll tell you, even when you're winning, you're losing. You're breaking even. <laughs> 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 you know. 
you know, with the <laughs> grand scheme of things. I've definitely lost a lot more money than I, uh, I've won over the years. <laughs> Got it. So it's it's like going to casino. Where you actually know the majority of the time you're going to walk out without money in your pocket. That makes yeah, sense. I, I'm just honestly, I you know, I, I like the competition and I like the people and I love uh, doing all of that. And just to see, you know, because it's a different animal to force yourself to catch a very specific fish when you have to. Uh, and you know, being around the guys that do, that have done this for way longer than I have and, and people that are way better fishermen than I am, it's crazy to see how good those guys are. And people don't understand, uh, you know, like when I got into it, I'm like, I catch fish all the time. I catch red fish, you know, whenever I go out right. and then to get in with that mix of guys that can catch those perfect fish every single time. Uh, I mean, I, I'm in awe sometimes because I mean, even even as much tournament fishing and fishing I do, I can catch fish most of the time. And, but so I still struggle. There's there's days that I'm like, man, I just can't, you know, I can't get on them today. And then you show up to weigh in, some people have these amazing fish. I'm like, what were you doing? <laughs> you know, well, what were they doing? I'm sure you talked to them afterwards. I'm sure. Yeah, and, and because a lot of us are friends, we sit there and we discuss some of it, and you know, like you know, what worked, what didn't. And so all of that's a learning stuff, but it just makes you a better fisherman in, in general doing the tournament thing. You're not, I mean, it's hard to win money and, and come out ahead, but it's more for me, the competition, the fun with those people, the interaction. Um, I, if you're, if you're doing tournament fishing for money, it's not going to work out well for you. <laughs> I mean, are you, are you, I mean, you're fishing with all, you're in the amateur division, right? So you're not fishing with the, the pro division or are you, do you have captains on your boat? Is that how that works? No, no. So, uh, you know, and that that's another thing. Uh, saltwater fishing is not the same, like saltwater tournaments. They're just not at the level that bass tournaments are. Mm. Uh, you know, so even like the really big tournaments here, they're, they don't really compare to, you know, I know, I know guys that do a lot of bass tournaments and you can make a living at that. It's hard to do that as a saltwater fisherman, mm. you know, just the prize pool just isn't the same. Really? So, yeah. I mean, you look at some of these bass tournaments where, you know, you win it and you're walking away with a hundred grand. Yeah. You know, a lot of these tournaments that I do, you'd be, you'd be lucky if it's 10 grand. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And that's an expensive, uh, expensive sport to jump into your expensive <laughs> boat. To pay yeah. <laughs> I actually yeah, got yeah. a video coming out. I'm going to ruffle some feathers. It's titled why kayak fishing destroys boat fishing it's really just all the reasons i like kayak fishing so the title's a little inflammatory but uh yeah i'm sure that i'm gonna be ruffling and getting people all riled up but um it's just a, it's just more expensive all yeah. around it is everything. it is for your sure you're your every everything well i mean you said something a little bit earlier it's like you once you find these schools of redfish you're talking hundreds of them mm -hmm. i mean is it normal to find hundreds like you do like can you can you are, this time of year yeah really? uh yeah uh, i mean it's not all the time but you know i go out at least a few times a week and at least once a week i will run up on schools of 40 plus redfish you know and then you'll run into them multiple times throughout the day it's at, that's pretty normal this time of year as you get into summer you don't see that much but it's uh and, and where i fish i fish in six inches of water or less 90 oh really percent of the time yep and so you'll see them, you know, their tail sticking out of the water, swimming through. And a lot of people don't, uh, aren't able to fish in the places that I fish because of the, how shallow it is. You know, most people can't get their boats back there, but my boat runs that. And so when I take people that have never been fishing, like in the marsh and they see those redfish for the first time, I forget because I see them all the time, but right. you know, they'll see them. They're like, Oh my God, I have never seen it. That is incredible to, to see. And I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah. That I mean, okay. Isn't Last he? Week, is really cool. Before like, that, yeah, yeah, I bet. Super cool. And I imagine it's a bunch of flat bottom boats and kayakers back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, my boat will go like much shallower than my kayak did. To be honest, really. Yep. Yeah. Wow. My boat will run in half an inch of water. Chill right. out. Yeah, that's some sweet engineering. Yeah, it's uh it, it's sketchy well that's another thing i love taking people out there too because they'll see all the oyster and all the mud sticking out of the water and they'll just run right through it and they're like holding on for dear life <laughs> you know <laughs> my yeah this is what we do love it hey let's switch gears really fast um because yep. i was watching one of your videos and it was kind of realization to you i noticed in your video that you were just say, saying that you know i i it's just been fishing videos fishing videos fishing videos and you wanted your channel to be something 
a little bit more than that. And so you just started sharing a little bit more about your life. One, I'm curious how that has played kind of to the audience of those who follow you. Were they receptive of it? Do people want that? Because I know as a content creator for me, especially starting out, I'm not even two years into having my, my channel. And so I've been truly, really just kind of keeping it brief and to the point, not really sharing a whole lot of stories outside of kind of it, w within this live show. Um, but I'm curious on kind of what that looked like for you and uh, what, do you, what do you do for a living? Because that was kind of the video that kind of kicked it off for me. Yeah, so I'm a uh, professional tattoo artist. Um, I own a tattoo shop here in Katy, Texas called Advent Tattoo. Uh, I've been tattooing, I guess now, 14 years, nice. something like that. So I've been doing it for a long time, which was kind of weird when uh, I started getting noticed for fishing as well, because I've been known in the tattoo world for a long time. Uh, and I always kind of kept those two parts of my life separate. And then over time, people that were knew me from tattooing and followed me from that started realizing that I fish. Uh, and then the same thing, a lot of my fishing friends, they're like, oh, my God, you do tattoos. And so they at one point, they just kind of intertwined. And now I I mean, every month I have fishermen that I tattoo because they've just those worlds collided. Right. <laughs> so, um, which is I mean, it's helped me because, you know, it's uh, I mean, I guess any exposure is good exposure. So um and that's what it is. I mean, I'm getting people from both sides now for business and for, you know, my, my fishing. So do you have a, a YouTube channel for your business? No, I don't. I, I have another art channel, but I literally haven't uploaded in like three years. Oh, <laughs> so right. It was just like uh, me painting and drawing and a lot of that. It wasn't tattoo. Related. Yeah. Oh, man, I wondered. it. So um, tell me a little more the, the why you got into tattooing like where'd that start you've always been a creative and kind of artist because that would make sense why you, you, you kind of open your arms to youtube right because yeah. this is a place for artists and creators yep yeah so uh i have been i've been drawing and painting i mean since i was a kid that was i always knew that i was going to be doing something in art hmm. and uh but I kind of fell into tattooing, which is really weird because a lot of people really try to get into this industry and they can't because it's mm. a very closed off industry. You have to really know people most of the time. Um, that wasn't the case for me. I went uh, after high school, I went to the military. And then after the military, I got out and I was working for like an engineering company. Uh, but I had a roommate and well, two roommates and they were both going to get tattoos. I didn't even I had one tattoo at that point. Okay. Um, but they knew that I was an artist. And then so they asked me to draw some designs for them. And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll draw something up quick for you. And I drew it for them and they took it to the tattoo shop. And then the owner of the shop called me after he saw the drawings and was like, would you like to come in and learn? And I was like, you know, that would be fun. I like to draw anyway. I'm doing it anyway. Might as well go in there and learn something new, some right. a new art form. Uh, and then I got I got into tattooing. And so I was working my engineering job during the day. I was tattooing at night. And then, <laughs> you know, here in Texas, uh, you know, the oil industry is that's what everyone does when you're in. Right. Uh, right. But the oil industry goes up and down. And there was a point where a lot of people were getting fired and laid off. I was pretty safe where I was. But um, everybody I knew, you know, the whole industry was changing. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to just leave this for a while until the industry gets better and I'm going to tattoo and I'm going to try to make that work until I can find a better job. And so I went tattooing full time, which was really hard because I took like a, probably a $60,000 pay cut when I did Jeez. that. Um, and it was supposed to be a temporary thing. And then after about a year, I finally started gaining clientele and making a little bit more money. And I was like, you know what? I could do this for the rest of my life. Uh, I really enjoy this. And I love being my own boss. I mean, at the time I wasn't my own boss, but I love the freedom. I didn't, you know, I wasn't in corporate America anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a few years later, me and a artist friend of mine, we, you know, we opened up Advent and I mean, that's, we've had Advent since 2013. Nice. So. Well, congrats. <clears throat> well, moving one from engineering to tattoo artist. It's a big jump. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I tip my hat to you because you know making big leaps like that, it's no joke. Um, it's scary. It's terrifying. Yeah. And, you know, I that's part of my my job too. Is I talk to a lot of people every day, and I mean it, it's almost like a therapy session. But uh, 
I always ask people about what they do and what they, you know, and they always, everybody has all these different jobs. And I ask them, do you like it? And they're like, and 90% of people will say the same thing, you know, well, it pays the bills. Really? Uh, 90%. Yep. And I'm like, then why do it? Why not do something that you love? Why not do something, you know, cause I, I love to draw and paint and I love artwork. And so I don't ever feel like I'm working. Like it's fun for me to go to work every day. And uh, if you, if you do that and you enjoy what you're doing, you're getting paid for something that you're going to do anyway. So I don't ever feel like I'm working. Now, obviously there's days that I'm like, I just do not feel like going in today, but <laughs> because you want to go fishing. That's yeah. really why. Yeah. 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 Your partner's <laughs> out there sending you photos of redfish. And but uh, I never go to work like God, it's another day of work. You know, mm. I just don't feel that way ever. And so, you know, I've, I've told people that and they're like, well, it's not that easy. And I'm like, it is. It's scary. It's terrifying. When I left the, uh, you know, engineering and went to tattooing, I took a huge pay cut, like I said, and I didn't know if I was going to make it, but it took six, nine months of doing something I really enjoyed. Plus when you really enjoy something like that, you put a lot more into it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was really focused and, uh, I don't know. That's my advice for everybody. Do what you love. No, I hear you. I mean, <clears throat> I have a job that I, I, I actually do love, but I would love someday to do YouTube full time, whatever it looks like, mm -hmm. content creation type of thing. And there'll be a good day in my life where I'm like, okay, when is when is that moment? When is the time to pull the trigger? Um, when do I need to pull back on finances and really just go after a dream? But you know, it doesn't it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, I've been doing this for I'm coming up on two years, and That's awesome. it's a slow it's a slow grow. But it didn't actually start growing for me. For all you out there who are thinking about starting, you know, I can, I can, I can do this. What they're watching, uh, I can do this. I can learn it all. Uh, it's all on YouTube. I've learned everything how to do YouTube on YouTube. Um, Same. I know, right? There's, there's literally channels out there that exist to help you create your YouTube channel, and they're awesome. And they mm -hmm. if you do what they say. Think Media is one of them. Um, yep. That I that I follow. Those guys are awesome, and. I just followed, did exactly what they said to do. And man, just gone crazy. But it wasn't, here, here's my point. It wasn't till I decided in my brain that I was going all in. Like if you just kind of do it here and there, I wasn't getting a lot of the yardage. It's when I was like, okay, I'm going to treat this like, I want to treat it like a part-time job. Right. And the second I did that, boom, if I were to show you my analytics right now, if we can hop on it, I mean, just through the roof. And we're talking, I'm not talking about thousands, I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of, of views because I, I just, you know, you turn to switch it on your brain. Hey, this is going to be, it's going to be the thing. There's no better time in history to kind of go all in on yourself, yep. especially when it comes to, to YouTube, when it comes to a lot of the things out there. So, Hey, we got some comments here. Um, one Kush one. Hey, that's an awesome story. So thank you for sharing. They're not yeah. talking about me, by the way, these are all from <laughs> me when you were telling your story. Um, Dana said, that's awesome. Anonymous. Can't pronounce that last. Um, give me some props there. And so, uh, you know, Jeff, Jeff had a question. <laughs> How many guys get tats of fish? A lot. <laughs> uh, so all my redfish guys, I can't tell you how many redfish tattoos I've done really in the last like six months. Uh, and you know, unfortunately, well, I say, unfortunately it is fortunate as well, but I did like one or two and then all the fishermen were like, Oh, I want that too. And so then I got a lot more people like, yeah, I want that, <laughs> you know, and so it just, I, I do at least two a month because, right. but a, a lot of that is because I know so many fishermen too. And so it goes hand in hand. Yeah. I and mean, it's, it's one of those things, right? I mean, I'm curious, whenever you first started tattooing, um, did you like rent a chair? Is that how that works? Um, Kind of. Uh, so the tattoo, well, that's another thing in our business I've changed because the tattoo industry, when you are a tattoo artist and not an owner, uh, most places do a percentage. So for normally a year or two, people are paying 50% of everything they make to the shop, oh. which is ridiculous. It's absolutely horrible. And I remember doing that for years. And then like, as you get a little, you know, further at, at an establishment, they might move you up to 60, but you're still giving away almost half your money. Right. Uh, and so there were months that I would do four or $5,000, and then I would walk away with, you know, $2,500. I'm like, where did all this, I work so hard for all of this. And so I changed that in my shop because I want the people there to make money. Right. Um, but I also wanted 
you know, obviously the bills and everything to be paid and I wanted to make money myself, but I don't do it that way because I don't think it's fair to people. Um, but because of that, we don't ever have anyone leave either. All of our Yeah, I can only stay. imagine your turnover is uh, pretty low. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, what? I'm curious. So let's see. Uh, what's the craziest <laughs> request you have received for like a fishing tattoo? And do you turn people down? All the time. All the time. Uh, You're like, no, a hard pass. <laughs> so <laughs> I want my name on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm at a point in my career now, though, that I can. You know, I, I generally stay mm. booked out three to four months in advance. Jeez, you guys hear that? If you want a tattoo of a redfish on your back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's about three to four months. Uh, when I first started, you know, in some of these shops, I was just trying to make as much money as I could. So a lot of us, we didn't turn anything down. You wanted something stupid? Yeah, sit down, let's do it. But I've gotten to a point in my career that I can now. And so I'll have consultations with everyone beforehand. And a lot of times it's just not something that I'm interested in doing. Uh, and maybe it's not that it's a stupid idea. It's sometimes it's just not something that I'm interested in. You know, or like the style is not what I want to do or just, you know, where it is. I mean, so I turn people down all the time and people get mad about that. But I'm like, you know, I don't have enough time to take on every project. I have I got to fishing. You guys I yeah. just check out my fishing channel. I, I, don't, <laughs> right. I don't have time for your tattoo. <laughs> yeah. I know you're not being, you know, a, a jerk about it. But hey, it's nice to be in a place where you yeah. can choose what you do. So once again, uh, tip my hat to you. This comes in from one Kush one. Have you tattooed yourself? I have. I have. How many uh, fish are on your body? I don't have any, actually. None. Surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but a lot of my tattooing myself, I mean, a lot of tattoo artists will tattoo themselves when they're learning. Mm. Uh, you know, and it's just part of that process. Uh, you know, there's an old joke. They, they say, if you ever want to see the worst tattoos, look at a tattoo artist's thighs because that's where they can see. And that's where you can yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was lucky enough to learn under some people that were really good. So I don't have anything horrible on, but I have tattooed my arms. I've tattooed my legs, uh, you know, small stuff. And then a lot of that's been covered up by, you know, over the years, but right. uh, I, I don't advise it. It, it sucks. <laughs> you know, I don't want to tattoo myself. It's painful because you anticipate the pain every time you're like about, you're like you're tensing up. It's uh -huh. not fun, but it's a good way to learn. Yeah, no, that makes sense. All right, so let's switch gears. Let's move back to fishing, even though I loved I loved taking a deep dive on that. Thanks for sharing a little bit about your life. Also, thank you for your service. Yeah, um, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so earlier in the show, and really quick, guys, before we hop into this question, just want to thank US River Maps for sponsoring the show, kind of making it possible. So, Jeff, I know you're on listening. Thanks. Tip my hat to you for starting a small business in the time that you did it. And so check it out, usrivermaps.com. And there is a code. You go into this uh, shop. It's good through year end. Get thirty five dollars off, and those things are pretty awesome. And so, if you got any questions, his email is actually on the website. Just contact him directly. So, thanks for making that possible. If you haven't given the show a like yet, please help me out. It helps with the replay value. If YouTube's like, hey, people liking this thing, they'll push it out to more people, and so hopefully get that out there. But hey, we we're talking about earlier in the show, and um, we talked a little bit about live bait, which. I've always thought in the saltwater world, live bait's where it's at. It's expensive, right? But that was where, where it's at. But there's a video that you had out, and I was really curious, and I didn't watch it because I wanted you to explain it. Five reasons to stop using live bait and to use artificial. Hit me. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of people, when they switch over to saltwater, live bait is where it's at, and it's easier. Uh, like, it, you know, during the summer, everyone switches over to croaker, and I'm going to tell you, it's pretty hard not to catch a fish on that. However, if you are looking to be a better fisherman, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and become really, really good at that, no matter what, because I, I see it every year, these guys that use croaker, they'll come out, they'll, you know, just destroy the fish all summer long and then fall, spring, winter, they can't catch down. fish at all. They mm -hmm. can't, they cannot catch fish and they don't understand why. Uh, but for all of us guys that use artificial, we can catch fish year round. And there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. uh, now, artificial, I always tell people that, I mean, there's a few reasons. One, you start to learn the behaviors of fish a lot more and what they like, the colors they like during different seasons of the year. And so you you have a lot of options to switch back and forth uh, between that and figure out why. Now, we I look at a lot of bait and I try to match whatever, I match the hatch. You know, that's what yeah. everyone says. 
Um, and so down in saltwater, we're looking at a lot of different types of fish and a lot of different types of bait, you know, shrimp and crabs and all. So we're matching all of that stuff. And once you learn all of that, artificial is actually a lot easier, you know, uh, plus it's cheaper. You know, you, I mean, that, that's, that's a big part of it. But, um, lastly, yeah, said there's, there's gas costs somehow. Yeah. 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 Um, but it, yeah, in all, it makes you, uh, it makes you a better fisherman, um, in, in pretty much every aspect, uh, now, and, and the people that rely on live bait, you know, it's, they, it's really hard for them to understand why, you know, when that, the fish, you know, there are certain seasons, they just can't catch fish. And they're like, I, I just don't understand. And I'm like, stop, just learn the fish. Like once you learn what they want, it's a lot easier to use anything and mm -hmm. you can switch back and forth. Um, so, I mean, that's the biggest reason it, it just makes you a better fisherman. Hmm. Well, it makes sense to me. I think we got, some, we got like six comments over here. I need to go over here and check them out. Um, yes. Roman empire baits, hundred percent. Used to use only live, never fished saltwater though. Um, so now he makes his own artificials. And yes, he had to learn fishing habits and colors. That makes sense. Um, one fish one, yeah, perfect. In the long run, lures end up being cheaper too. Um, yeah. I'm about to start to make his own. Hey, I'm about to start making my own. That's awesome, man. Hey, one fish one, Roman Empire, you guys should get together, um, check each other out. But um, so I have something I like to do. Oh, we're way over mid show. <laughs> <laughs> we're coming down the holy cow, we're at 50 minutes. Woo, I love it. But I love to do something called um the uh lightning round where I ask you five questions and I'm looking for one word answers. And a lot of times we'll circle back on these questions and kind of kind of you know unpack them a little bit more. Okay. So you you ready for this? Yep. Right, here we go. Number one, favorite fishing kayak accessory when you had one. Mm. Power pole. Oh, right on. Makes sense. Uh, number two, tattoo you're most proud of doing. Uh, I did a skull and octopus that uh, that was probably my favorite tattoo I've ever done. Nice. How long ago was that? Mm, about six months. Oh, nice. All right. Favorite <laughs> rod reel combo? Uh, well, Laguna, because I'm sponsored by Laguna. <laughs> so uh, Laguna, right. Trident, Laguna Trident rods. Uh, and I like Shimano Corrado DCs. All right. We'll circle back on the sponsorship. I'm curious about other sponsorships as well. Um, number four, favorite fishing YouTube channel. Well, <laughs> beyond mine. Um, let's see. Uh, you know, I, uh, for me, I, li I like Thresher. Thresher's uh, entertaining to watch. Okay. Is there a salt, salt left guy? Salt water. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'd say. I, like I, I haven't heard of, I haven't heard of him yet, but probably because I do a lot of fresh water and number five favorite YouTube channel, not fishing. Peter McKinnon. What's his all about? Uh, about creating YouTube videos and uh, video editing and photography. And yeah, huh. he, he is super, super entertaining. All right. I like that. All right. So let's go back to sponsorships real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. wait, I, got, I got some comments here. Um, let me see what we got. Da, 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 da. No, don't see any questions here. Except this, with the plastics. I don't plastics where I get my bait. Oh, this, these, this is a conversation taking place over here. <laughs> Nothing okay. to do with us. Uh, they're just talking to each other, which happens every once in a while. So, uh, right yeah. on. So, tell me, you're sponsored by uh, that pole company. I'll let you see it here and again. Any any other companies? What's that look like for you? Um, and how'd that come to be? Did you reach out to them? They reach out to you? Uh, I'm really bad at reaching out to people. Um, <laughs> so, and, and like, it, it's always been really hard for me to ask people for free stuff. <laughs> I'm just not that person. Uh, so I've been really lucky where people have reached out to me and I'm like, yes, I will take that. Um, <laughs> but uh, I am sponsored by Laguna uh, anglers anonymous, which is on my hat uh, sponsored by them. Um, Grundens. Uh, I'm with them DOA fishing lures. So right, you're going to yeah. have to back up. You're naming, you're naming things that I don't know what they are. No. So what's, what's Anglers Anonymous? I mean, Anglers, I, I get the I get the point, but what is it? A company? Is it like a? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's group? a uh, saltwater tackle shop uh, here in Texas. Uh, right. Yep, yeah, and they they are pretty much they carry all the premier um, things that you would need for. I mean, it's it's not like your academy, so it's a lot of higher end stuff that yeah. that are very specialty for saltwater. 
Nice. So. All right, keep going. You're running through some. Uh, and then Grundens. Do um, uh, you know what Grundens is? I'm not familiar. Okay. Grundens is a, an apparel company. Uh, they make some of the best uh, hard weather <laughs> apparel okay. that you can possibly. I mean, like they have, I mean, it's all like Gore-Tex. If, if you ever watch like Deadliest Catch, all those guys are wearing Grundens. Don't Grundens. Got it. Yep. I need I need to find a company like that. I, you're down in Texas. I'm up here in the part of the frozen chosen up here in Ohio where it's like frozen over. I need, is it like warm weather stuff or is it just like Both. weather? Beating? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like, I, for instance, I have a gambler jacket jacket from them. Um, and that thing, I mean, it's waterproof. It's completely waterproof. It has neoprene on the sleeves. Uh, it'll, you know, withstand like up to 30 inches of rain a, an hour. So, which is, you could pretty much stand in a hurricane and stay dry. Yeah. Um, which in Texas, that happens sometimes. Yeah. That happened, but, where you, it happened near you. you yeah. 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 I mean, uh, we've, I've been through two hurricanes here. So does it kill the fishing or is you just, did it come back? It's awful. Um, you know, so I will say the fishing is great right before a hurricane. Mm. Uh, the hurricane comes through. It's awful for a little while and then it gets really good again. How long is a little while? It depends how bad it is, and it depends. You know, some hurricanes, depending on which direction the the wind is turning, uh, sometimes it really destroys our base. Sometimes it really helps our base. Um, so it depends on the hurricane. But um, like Harvey, it was probably a month or so before fishing got great again. Mm, it's tough. Well, I I asked you kind of have something to, uh, ready to show everybody because I. I... I have a bunch of different, like a miscellaneous group of tackle boxes that I, that I use. And I was like, okay, what's one thing that can kind of transcend kayak fishing um, for every, every angler. And you had this video on Busby, which I've seen this stuff before. I've never had my hands on it before, but stuff you're showing looks legit. And so do you have that nearby by chance? Did you? Yeah. yeah let me grab it. It's right behind me. I want to, I want to hear a little bit about this. This stuff looked, it was, looked like it yep. was waterproof. Um <clears throat> Let me see what we got over here in the comments. All right. Walk me through how you have your, your tackle storage. There we go. All right. Walk me through how your, your tackle storage. I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> uh, yeah. You exclusively use Busby, right? That is it. All right. And this is the Busby tackle container uh here, let me... is that just a waterproof shell yeah it's it's kind of like the same material as like those yeti soft coolers all right and it, i mean the zipper's the same and all of that but, um this is really just to hold them all here i pull what's really cool about busby here, i'll show you this so inside it holds got it Four different tackle boxes, but um, yeah, this is them. What's cool about them, though? Everybody on the podcast is like bouncing right now. But hey, go are, over to the uh, the live show and you'll be able to see what we're talking about. All right. Yeah. So, so you these can are, pull. These are modular. Uh, they okay. come in different sizes and shapes, so I can like pull out one of the boxes. I can move them around. They snap in and. Any arrangement that you can imagine, uh, they have like these come in like four or five different sizes. So this one just happens to be soft plastics, but um, some are like square shaped. Some of them are longer, bigger for like top waters. And... Is there any uh, type of there any like I know some of these are like a hey, rust rust preventative stuff like that. Is do they? These are that? completely waterproof. Uh, it's all made from like aircraft materials that, and yeah here's one that's different sizes okay dropping stuff yeah sorry but, about um, asking you this question i feel like i'm destroying also, your tackle boxes they're also um they all float all right and it doesn't matter how much weight you put in this i mean i've done it i've loaded it up with a bunch of different weights thrown it in the water and it still floats so as long as it's closed <laughs> um it'll float. So you, you never have to worry about it. I use it when I go waiting sometimes, like they have some smaller versions of these. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I'll just put those on me with some lures and I'll go wait fishing. So, cause I don't have so, to worry about them. They, 
Yep. One of the most irritating things I have with some of mine, and I have some Plano, some, they weren't inexpensive, um, but when I push them underwater, water got in, so they weren't completely waterproof. And then what the most irritating thing is, is it, it doesn't sound like it happens with these, but my hooks, a lot of times when you put that, that shell and you close them on the top, if I were to turn it over, all my hooks are all, you know, scattered into the next compartments. Does that happen? No. Nope. So all of these lock in the bottom and the top of the lid. So the lid locks, it has these little squares. And so it locks in the top. So you can shake that thing around and nothing will move. It's about freaking time someone creates something like that because man. Yeah, and and uh, the owner, his name's Caleb and uh, he's really good about, I mean, he says that they're pretty much impossible to break. I managed to crack one of these and he sent me a brand new one the day, uh, well, a day later. So yeah. uh, I don't know what I did. <laughs> but uh, he was actually really surprised. He's like, that's the first one I've ever seen. But um, yeah, they're great. They're great. And, and they are they are more expensive than most tackle boxes, but I, I've i used these now for over two years and I, I'm still using the same tackle box. You only got to buy it once. Yeah, it's, uh, I love Only Cry Once. That's what I call it, Only Cry Once yeah. here. Uh, it's going to hurt the first time, but uh, it lasts for a long time. And here's the thing. Busby has nothing to do with this. You're not, I'm, I don't know if you're sponsored by it. We're not trying to be like selling you something. He's no. always really curious in it, curious on it, because I'm looking to get some probably around Christmas after I could probably get some Christmas money and uh, I'm looking for the best. And so I was just curious because I saw it, you. It is the best. Uh, and, you know, I'm not sponsored by them at all. Now they have definitely. Uh, so I did a video on their first tackle boxes and they have definitely sent me some, a lot of stuff for free, but there's no sponsorship there. It's just, uh, they just make a great product. And yeah. I, I've talked about it multiple times in my videos. Um, and I'm not expecting anything from them ever. Uh, but I would gladly pay for these. Hmm. So. Hmm. Um, next question comes from one Kush one. What's the price though? <laughs> What's that only cry <laughs> once price? Um, I don't even actually know off the top of my head. I know that they're, they're about double what your normal tackle boxes are. Got it. Yeah. Uh, I think each one, is, well, you know, you can buy them in a case, which is what most people do. They'll buy the whole box with everything in it. And I think it ends up being 180, maybe 200 bucks, but you get four of those. You get all the compartments, you get the waterproof bag. You get all, I mean, there's a lot that comes in it. Yeah. So, so I, I, I was thinking today, I was like, what's some questions I can ask Mike? And one of the questions that came up because you kind of have this unique scenario where you, you used to be a kayak fisherman and now you're a boat fisherman, even though you go out every once in a while with your buddies on your kayak. And um, I've always been curious. I owned a boat, but it was a long time ago and I kind of sold it and um, got into kayak fishing. Do you do you feel and I'm not. Because I noticed one of your videos where it said, oh, what was it? Someone don't be this guy video. And it mm -hmm. was a boat, a couple boats. You were in a boat, nonetheless, but it was a couple of boats that basically cut your line, um, weren't paying attention. Yeah. Maybe one of them. The other one definitely was paying attention because you noticed that he was guiding and he had uh, customers with him. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious. One, I want to hear that story. And two, after you tell that story, tell us, do you, do you feel like when you are kind of when you have a boat, do other boaters treat you a certain way? And when you have a kayak, did you feel a discrepancy in the way? Um, whether on the water or off the water. Um, you know where I'm getting, you know yeah. where I'm getting at? Okay, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll let you that's, take it from here. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's, that's a good question because I'll tell you when I used to kayak, I hated boaters. Like, mm. and there's this, there's this like constant battle between kayakers and boaters. Uh, and I never understood why they just don't like, you know, why they will run right next to you and like, you know, push you up against the, you know, especially here in the Bay, like in the marshes, like it, it's just not hard to be, um, you know, generous and, you know, a good person, you know, around other people and just, you know, be respectful. Yeah. Uh, and so I never understood that. And I, and I'll get to that in a second because now that I've done both, I understand. Okay. I understand, I understand some of that, but, uh, it's just, you know, uh, I mean, in butters and boaters and kayakers and kayak everybody, I don't understand why people just can't be, you know, decent people around, you know, I mean, it's fishing, you know, it's, it should be a nice relaxing, um, should be. And I don't know why everyone has attitudes and problems. Like when I'm out there, I'm, I'm as happy as I could possibly be. You can't really make me mad. <laughs> you know, it's pretty hard. Right. So, 
uh, you know, but you, you do, you were talking about that video and that, that one was pretty irritating because, uh, you can't see it in the video, but basically we're fishing the, this like jetty of rocks, uh, and a boat comes in between us and we might be 30 yards off, 30, 40 yards off of the rocks, but we're fishing into the rocks and we're drifting all the way down and they run right in front of all of us. And I mean, ruin our fishing. Uh, but what you don't see in that video is behind us is about five miles of water. So it would have been real easy for them to go behind us, let us keep fishing, but they, you know, again, just, you know, disrespectful. They don't care about anything but themselves. Uh, and so that video kind of got a lot of views just because everyone had their opinion on that. <laughs> but what? Yeah. Like an opinion? <laughs> yeah. Share they're... it in anonymity? What? <clears throat> Yeah. You know, you, you, in, in those, every time I post them, like you, you get these people like, well, you don't own the water. Bro, you don't own the bro. It usually starts with bro or ends with bro. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yeah. well, no, but if I saw somebody fishing against the shoreline, I sure wouldn't, you know, cut them off. It's yeah. real easy to give them respect and go, right? It's just, it's not hard to be, be a nice person. <laughs> you know, it's not. I recently uh, had one. Um, I ended up taking it down because it brings so much negativity into my channel. It was just a short. Yeah. Um, and this is what people don't see is like, I didn't turn my camera around to show you the other 500 acres of lakes and you're right. the only Same. two boaters there. And yeah. there's really no reason why she'd even have to look at anybody else today. And they're within casting distance. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone's, you know, everyone's got their opinion, you know, calling you names and, and whatever. You don't own the water. I get it. I don't own the water. Um, but like you said, it's not that, it's not that hard just to be considerate. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not asking for, for you to get up and leave but um i'll be gone in five minutes <laughs> you yeah, know what i mean yeah, yeah it's not hard shore, bro it's okay. sorry so keep going i want to hear your thoughts on why the tension and you said you can you feel like you have a you have, a, you have an idea yeah so uh you know when i was kayaking i always on i i was always irritated about boaters especially in the marsh because they'll come flying around the corners and then they get next to you and you know i even told some of my boater friends like hey especially in spots like that just stay on a plane and go past this because the wakes is, is a lot smaller but these people would like shut it down and then they would like throw you and they or they would get really close and i just like i don't i never understood that um and i was just like why why do boaters hate kayakers so much um, and then when I switched over and I got a boat, I understood, uh, at least the other side of that, because a lot of times kayakers, they don't get over to the side. And so, you know, when you're running on a plane on a boat, like I can't stop half the time, you know, otherwise I'm going to be sitting on the mud or oyster and I'm going to be stuck. So I have to run pretty close to people, um, kayakers in these like small channels. But on top of that, you know, like, I think if everybody were to do both, we would all get along. <laughs> you know, because you can understand, don't know what they need to do around kayakers. Kayakers don't know that these boaters can't shut it down. Like when they're in four inches of water um, and they have to stay on plane, otherwise they're going to get stuck. And so everybody has this, this, they're just, there's this misunderstanding between kayakers and boaters. And because of that, they hate each other for no reason. <laughs> so. All yeah. right. I was curious because I've had, you know, I, I fish mostly lakes and stuff like that. And a lot of all the lakes that I fish and ponds that I fish, they're, they're you know, no motor lakes and ponds. Um, and I still deal with this. And I always feel like there's a tension. Like I feel a camaraderie with mm -hmm. kayak fishing. That was, that actually makes one of my points in my upcoming video. Why I just love kayak fishing so much um, is that camaraderie. But I, for some reason, don't feel it. Or maybe I just had a couple of bad experiences that keep popping up in my mind when I think of only it all it takes is one, right? One yeah, yeah. kayaker, kayak fisherman to irritate a boat fisherman for them to go back and talk to their buddies and talk about how, you know what I mean? Yeah, how yeah, that's one. exactly right. And, and, and likewise. Um, and so that's kind of how that there's, you got groups of friends <laughs> that you, fishermen get talking and you start kind of building these uh, walls that don't need to be there. As I, I don't, I personally don't care if you're fishing from a boat or a pool noodle or one of those rubber ducks. We're all yeah. there having, we're all having a good time. Um, but yeah, I hear you. All right, let me see what else here. I, we're coming up to the end of our time here. I want to see if I had another question for you. Um, oh, yeah. There's one last question. Uh, two last questions. And if you have a question for Mike, go ahead and throw that in. It will be one of the last ones we get to him. But um, your lures for redfish, number one lure for redfish. 
and we're not i'm not talking seasonal like i'm going to pull this out like if you could only fish with one lure the rest of your life to catch redfish what would that artificial be uh it would be a doa swim bait in white all right <laughs> i think i have one around here somewhere yeah maybe but yes i do it's probably all over the floor. It just made you drop them all. What's that? All right, you gotta put it put up a little closer. Uh, yeah, here, I'll pull it out. All right. Yeah, that ate right there. All right, there it is, folks. Yep. Oh, uh, now I see it. Oh, sweet, a sweet little yeah. paddle tail. Yeah, and it's like a different. It's not like a normal paddle tail. It's real floppy. It looks but, like a uh, platypus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um. I've been using that a lot, and that's probably my favorite. Uh, but redfish are very seasonal, and you have to switch baits on them throughout the year. But if I only had one year round, that would be it right there. Yeah. All right on. Well, I have uh, one last question for you. I'm not getting any questions from uh, those that are on right now, uh, but I do have one last question for you. It's, uh, who who do you know that you think would love this type of show, and uh, we can invite them to come on? Anybody come to mind? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Honestly, you know, my best friend, Caleb, uh, Caleb Cumber, he's a, uh, he's a red fishing tournament. He's a guide. He's a fishing guide. Oh, nice. You know, but he, he's also dealt with all kinds of fishing from kayaking to boating to tournament fishing. In fact, he just, uh, went to the world series of redfish last, last Whoa. year. So, so that's yeah. awesome. I haven't, had a, I haven't had a guide on yet, so that might be, I mean, nice. I mean, just to let everyone know, whenever I ask this question, I actually reach out to these individuals afterwards to see if they're interested. Yeah. Actually, there's another one, uh, especially because you're more into uh, um, kayaking. I would probably talk to uh, Scott Knoll or Dean Thomas because they were both kayak fishing guides as well. Uh, I can give you all their information. Yeah, I love it. All right, right on. Well, I'll reach out afterwards. Well, everybody, if you have not done it yet, please head over to Texas Fishing Force. If you enjoyed Mike's story, Love what he does. Just wants to support him or see what he's putting out. Hit that sub button. I know he'd appreciate. Uh, he would appreciate that. So, Mike, anything else that you'd like to say? Not off the top of my head. Uh, I, I really appreciate you having me on. This was a lot of fun, man. Man, I, it was too. I love. And if you're ever up here in the Canton, Ohio area, the Caribbean of the Midwest, please let me know. I'll take you out. I got oh, a couple yeah, of great. kayaks. And if I'm ever down your way, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll ever get way down there, but hey, you never know. I travel from work a lot. so Yeah, come on down. We'll, we'll, we'll go out. We'll, we'll get, get some redfish. All right, folks. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening in. And uh, if, you're only gonna, if you're only able to check in a part of this, uh, it's all right. I put it on podcast. Um, so wherever you stream your podcast, if you want to listen in when you're going to work or working out, whatever, if you can catch the whole thing, you're like, hey, I wish I did. Check that out. Kayak Fishing Obsessed. Everyone, thank you so much. We'll see you next Tuesday. I believe we have Fishing with Gramps coming on. And then the following week, which I think is like Christmas week or something crazy like that, or the week before Christmas, we have Burley Fishing on. So I just booked them yesterday. So I'm pretty pumped about that. But thanks for listening in. You guys are awesome. And I'll see you next week, uh, next Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern.